Hey guys, what's up? This is Diaphone. Today we're going to be doing a beginner and intermediate guide for Axel, covering his normals and specials really in depth and getting you a feel for that character. We'll also be doing a brief overview and we'll do be doing some combos and execution tricks at the end in order to be able to execute some of his more technical stuff. As always, if you guys are interested in these guides, please don't forget to like and subscribe. So yeah, Axel's kind of like your Dalsum type character in Guilty Gear, right? He has very long reaching limbs and no other character really has this so his main thing is that he has some of the best full screen presence in the game especially like Renson or sickle flash it goes full screen it kind of controls the pacing of the match and forces the opponent to come to you so if you're someone that wants to force the opponent to come to you and have to play defense axel is probably the best character for that one of his strengths is again that sickle flash move is so strong and it forces people to come because if not they're just going to keep eating chip they're going to eat combos um, they're just going to take a crap ton of damage, right? It has a bunch of positives to it, where it can beat fireballs and it puts you in a good situation on block and, you know, some of the follow-ups can be really tricky to deal with too. He also just, in general, controls spaces that other characters can't. Not a lot of characters have a, have a, a move that kind of reaches up there in that fast, right? Same thing here, same thing here. The other thing that you might not think of a dulcim like character, but he has actually really good mix-up options. He has 6HS, which is overhead can be tough to react to. He has a command grab that works for full screen. And it's actually pretty hard to deal with. It's pretty safe as well. You can't really punish it. Um, he has something like JH and the, that's a overhead and that's again very tough to react to and he has different ways to hit it right um so in general like this character actually has some pretty decent mix-up options once he's at advantage to kind of mix you up he also has like good throw baits with like this move he can obviously has throw which are very strong in this game as well um some of the cons of this character because his tools are very strong at certain ranges characters that can get around those tools are naturally going to be a very bad matchup for him right and just like any dulcim like character in any game having bad matchups due to your character archetype is kind of unavoidable but he also has really bad defense not only does he not have a dp in this game but he also he only has one invincible super which of course is unsafe if you uh, throw it out. So in order to make it safe, you need a 100 meter, which doesn't happen very often in this game. The other thing that's kind of unfortunate about him is, you know, he doesn't really have good ways to poke out. Like a lot of characters have like a fast jab. Um, you don't have that because your jabs go like half screen. <laughs> Um, so generally you, you'll be poking out with something like a 5k and then air dashing. The other unfortunate thing about him is that up backing is not as strong with this character because you don't really have that good of um, ways to, how do I say? Characters have like different ways to alter their trajectory and they can like kind of air dash out of the corner. Axel, Axel can kind of do this, but for a character like this, it kind of seems a little riskier. You know, you have to do something like that, which is a lot slower than what some other characters would get. But again, I think his pros make up for the cons, and I think he has some really good matchups. And even if you just use him as a counterpick character, he can still be very strong. And even if you want to main him, I think he's viable enough, especially with the game being this early. So let's talk about his normals, right? Um, he actually has a very diverse set of normals. It, it's going to take a little bit more time to cover than another character because, again, all of his normals have uses, right? So let's talk about 5P. Um, it goes about like two-thirds screen. The problem with 5P is that you can crouch or you can dash under it. So if the opponent predicts a 5P is coming, they can literally just dash under in a certain range and then get a punish. Um, but it's still good to throw out. It's pretty low committal. It has some very good recovery compared to his other normals. And it's, it can, kind of controls the space. Like if they're standing, if they're throwing out like a standing move from this range, it also covers this jump range too. So it's very good, like preemptive, non-committal normal to throw out. So on air hit, you can get something like this. Um, you can also get Link a 6K afterwards, after the 5P, I'll cover that later. But in general, if you can predict the jump, you get pretty good damage off of it. His 6P is also another anti-air. Um, this is more of a reaction anti-air. You don't want to throw this out preemptively, generally, um, just because it has a very small hitbox, so throwing it out, it's not gonna really do that much. But it has head and vol, and it can be used on reaction. You can get a small combo on hit, depending what you want to go for. It's very similar to other 6Ps, but again, this is more of your reactionary anti-air. Um, your 2P is a good low check. Um, let's say if your opponent is running in and you just need something quick to stop them that's generally what your 2b is for you can also cancel the special so you can do something like that um just to you can buffer it into uh your 214s just to catch your run -in. same thing with this but of course that's less safe um Renson works as well 
Um, so yeah, generally, if you're gonna throw that out, you sh probably should be canceling it. You just have to be really mindful of what range they're gonna be at when you cancel it. 5K is jump cancelable. Yeah, so 5K is pretty good. This is like your anti-pressure tool because again, you can't poke out with 2P or 5P. Um, so you can do something like this. You can jump cancel or jump cancel back away. Both are very good. Um, you can also cancel the specials again. Here's 2K is just, it's like his only standard normal uh, along with his 5K. You can just, you can cancel the sweep. That's the most common option. And then you can end in uh, either the specials. Um, generally you want to hit confirm into 214 HS though, because that gives you the best uh, Oki situation. Uh, 5S, this is kind of a lackluster normal. I don't really use the neutral it's combo filler, so something like this works. Um, but generally you're not going to be throwing that out too much. 2S is a very good anti-air. Think of this as like people that like the air stall or directly above you. That's where you want to do your 2S. On counter hit, you get a full combo. And that's really good damage for an anti-air, especially in this game. Yeah, on non counter hit, you get a good decent combo and you can actually, um, you know, you can RC it, get additional damage too. 5HS is another button you don't really want to throw out in neutral. It's just, it's just too slow, not enough range. But again, 5 Heavy Slash can be used in neutral, I mean, uh, in block strings or in pressure or as a combo filler. 2 Heavy Slash though, this button is really good for neutral. On counter hit, this does combo. That's really good. So generally, yeah, if you're trying to counter hit the opponent in like this range, that's your normal to go to. It also catches dash in two. And even if they're dashing in and this doesn't combo on non counter hit, you still get, are put in a pretty good situation. So think of that as like your ground poke beater and like a more committal way to beat dashing. Uh, six HS is actually really good normal. Um, it hits overhead. It can be used as like a throw bait. So if they go for a throw, they get throw baited and now you get a full combo. Just something basic like that. Um, it can also just be used spaced out like this. And generally, if you space it out, you're actually in a pretty good situation on block as well. But yeah, you should be using it as an overhead when they're not expecting it. You can also cancel it from like a 5k. So something like that will work. 2k as well. You can mix up with 2k and into sweep and 2k into overhead, but it's kind of gimmicky, right? Because if you're looking out for the overhead, generally you can block it. And the goal of this is to throw it out unpredictably. So they don't block it, right? Um, 5D, his 5D standard, like obviously it's just like other 5Ds where you can you can either do a standard 5D or you can hold the 5D. Um, I don't recommend get, getting used to the 5D because again, a lot of players, if you hold it, they're not going to get hit by it. I mean, it's it's pretty slow startup, but just doing something like that can be decent, especially about RC. So yeah, you get something like that, which is uh, it's pretty good. Um, you can also do something like this and that's a little harder to react to, right? So I don't recommend doing 5D that much. So for his jump normals, jump P and jump K are just your standard air to airs. Um, this is obviously works farther, but it's slower than his jump K. Jump S is kind of, this This normal is really good. One of the main things you should be doing in neutral are just, you know, air dashing back and jump Sing. That's really strong, to be honest. Um, and you're put in a very good situation on block. But other than that, like, yeah, you can also do neutral jump. You can also forward jump and kind of start your pressure of JS. It's just really good air to ground. It's really strong. Yeah, one of his best normals and one of the ones you should be using uh, most often. His jump heavy slash is kind of like your jump, your go-to jump in, right? You can get a combo off of that. You do have to time it. It is kind of hard to uh, time. You have to be pretty consistent with the timing. See, even I'm, I'm struggling a little bit there, but yeah, eventually you go, you'll get the timing down. You can get a combo from it. Same thing with JS. Timing can be a little tricky and you, you do have to like, you see how like spacing dependent it is. Generally, you're not going to get a combo from JS. <laughs> jump D, it's, it's used for combos. Like, you know, you get a combo on counter hit like that. So it can be good to like jump in with this. Yeah, so you do get a combo on counter hit, but it is really, it's somewhat slow startup. But yeah, I, I honestly, this is probably one of the better jump in normals you can be using, especially from like air dash, just because again, if you counter hit them, you, uh, you get a full combo and the combo is honestly, it's a lot easier than like your JH. So it's pretty good. Um, so summary, JP, JK is good air to air. JS is strong air to ground, um, just to control space. And then JH and JD, you want to use the jump ins. All right, so let's talk about the specials. Couple of specials are very easy to conceptualize as 214 HS. 
Um, this is kind of like your combo ender, so if you get something like a sweep, you just go into 214 HS, you get put in a pretty good situation. This can be unsafe, so you don't really want to throw it out. I know Axel can just punish with his 5P, other characters can punish it as well. Um, so just be careful with it, right? Generally, it's not worth to throw it out on block. This also is good, works in the air. Um, I, I don't like throwing out raw, but doing something like JS into that is really good at combos, and also it kind of frame traps, you can delay it. And uh, if they're trying to press after your JS, you can you can hit them out, which is it's pretty good. Generally, it's your hit confirm and also throw it out in the air after like JS, right? You can also just throw it out raw, but it has this like weird range where it'll just whiff, unlike JS where it's like always gonna hit. So I find it more consistent just to throw it out after after JS. Uh, it's two one four S. It's more of like a pressure frame trap tool. You can um you can use it as a throw bait. So instead of like let's say you run up throw, next time you can just run up two one four S. And you get a full combo after. Um, also, you actually get put in a pretty decent situation if you block. So let's say let's say your opponent is guarding, and you don't want to go into that because they'll punish you, right? So you can do something like this: go into S, and you're actually at it's about even, but you know it it can vary depending on when it actually hits. And against a lot of characters, if you're even at this spacing, <laughs> you're actually at advantage, right? So getting them to block this is pretty good. The only issue is that they can jump over it. So let me show you what that looks like. So if you if you want to punish this, you know, you can interrupt it, but a lot of characters can't do that, unfortunately. But you can punish it, something like that. And that's obviously a good option, but you have to do it preemptively, right? Which if they do it preemptively, it, you could just not cancel or you could cancel into like Renson or something and uh, you can punish that attempt. So there is some mix up and it's still good to use. Um, he has a command grab. It's a half circle forward. And the way it works is you see this like gr trail of like dirt on the ground. It comes out from behind and then it follows, um, comes to Axel, right? And the closer you are to Axel, the more startup it essentially has. And that means the harder it is, the easier it is to react to. So if you're from full screen, I think this is very hard to react to, especially because the animation is not very tough. Obviously, you know, opponents can just preemptively jump and there's not much risk jumping from here. Um, but it's something that opponent always has to keep in mind if you notice the opponent sitting still a lot, especially with all the other stuff they have to look out for. You know, command grab is a very strong tool. It's also very good because it corner switches as well. You know, if you're in the corner and they just happen to be like at this range, yeah, you know, now they're in the corner. <laughs> so that, that's a pretty unique property. Um, generally, you don't want to be using up close, but if for some reason you do get it up close, uh, obviously, you see how much longer that has start up. You actually get a combo from it. Probably because you shouldn't be ever hitting this. But yeah, you get something like that, right? And you can obviously, you can throw in a 6k there for more damage, but it's obviously a little harder. Generally, you shouldn't be using that much. The other cool thing about this is if it whiffs, let's say, let's say that whiffed, he was jumping, you can RC it and then you can try to anti-air him. Same thing here, like you think they're going to jump and then you can go for like a anti-air or air throw or um, however else you want to do it. So let's talk about the two specials that I actually take a little more detail to explain. So his air bomber is DPH in the air. Um, it doesn't look very useful at start, but the main purpose of this is it actually works as a combo filler. So think of this as like if you get a time stop super or you get like a corner RC combo or you get a DP punish, generally Axel Bomber is going to be <laughs> useful in those situations, right? The whole concept of uh, Axel Bomber is because you don't really, the opponent is not usually up here. So you want to do it slightly off the ground. So there's what's called a TK Axel Bomber. And what you do is you basically jump and then you do the axle bomber. So it looks something like that. From a grounded normal, it's actually a lot easier. Um, you see how, because there's extra hit stun, you can, and that's typically how you're gonna do it. You do it from like a close slash, that's jump cancelable. You jump cancel and then you do the axle bomber. There's a couple ways to execute this, right? I like to do it the traditional way where I just hit up forward and then I do the DP motion. I find it most consistent. Some people like to do like a two thirds circle back. So you basically start at six and you end at seven and then you do down forward and then heavy slash. I find it somewhat inconsistent, but I mean, I'm obviously getting consistently here. So it's up to you which one you want to do. I personally like doing the, um, the standard method, but I think this method actually works out quite well as well. But either way, 
Um, it's used for combos. We'll show you guys those later. The other special he has is the Sickle Flash. Um, this is his only charge special, which means you have to hold back for a little bit and then you have to hold forward. And then the Sickle Flash comes out. It has three different follow-ups. Um, and four, you can say you just don't follow up, which you want to do sometimes, um, especially if the opponent's predicting another follow-up, they might just you know block and then you can just do another uh, Sickle Flash. You have this pullback, which is generally used for combos. The other cool thing about the, the pullback is if they are jumping and they're guarding, it's a very common situation. You'll get pulled out like that. And the cool thing is that looks like Ted's that looks terrible because you pull them right next to Axel. But you're actually plus after that. So you can kind of do what you want. I would like to do like a close slash because generally um yeah, it's jump cancelable and then you can do some cool things after that. But you are plus. Um, you can also do stuff like um, 6HS or throw. Um, that sort of mix up after you pull them back as well. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually pretty good. So if you ever pull them back, um, especially if they're in the air, don't be afraid just to uh, you know have them come towards you. If they're doing this option, by the way. You can just uh, do a 2L afterwards and, and check them there. You are plus. So it's actually a pretty good situation to be in. So that's just your combo filler and if they're up in the air. He has the follow-up where you just press F S afterwards and you get this. The cool thing is you can delay this and if you delay it to the max, you'll say yes, right? And that's pretty cool because on counter hit, you can actually link in their sickle flash. It also serves as a frame trap. So if they're just blocking and they just don't want to go anywhere, try to go for the yeses. And they're gonna be, you're gonna be so plus that you can just do another sickle flash afterwards and uh, catch them again. So that's really strong tactic, um, full screen. Just do something like this. See them blocking. Okay, just do another one, right? And they can jump out of that, but if they start jumping out, then you do the immediate S version, and then you can uh, you can hit their jump out, right? So you kind of have like that little mind game going mid screen. It's actually it's actually pretty good. Um, the last follow up, and this is like typically you use at this range because if you do the S explosion, you see how it just explodes behind them. It's at a fixed range. You don't want to do the pullback because again that either whiffs or if they're crouching it whiffs or it doesn't really put you in the best situation. You're actually minus there. So another thing you can do is you can try to suck them in, and a lot of people will try to dash forward after your sickle flash reason being see how that whiffed because i was dashing and so in order to beat that dashboard and kind of serve as a mix-up tool you can just hit down and now catch the dashboard and the cool thing about this is you can extend the length of how long this goes by keeping the hold down so you can do it for a long time or you can do it for a short time right because of that it makes it hard for the opponent to press their advantage you can obviously like rc this and get a combo as well um generally i use this follow up the least but if you predict they're gonna dash forward after your stickle flash this is the best way to punish it because it comes out fast and it can hit dash and it also like sucks them in a little bit too um, which also like screws up their spacing and they're more often to get hit than not. All right, so let's talk about supers. Core Circle Forward twice, Heavy Slash. Uh, it's just a reversal super, has invincibility, um, but is unsafe. And actually it's safe on block, but the issue is, is that between the first and second hit, you can jump and <laughs> you get full punish. Yeah, it's it can be unsafe, um, so don't just throw it out. Um, try to throw it out when you have a read. Generally, like you know, it's Axel, so people are gonna press their advantage. So you do need to throw this out from time to time. You know, do be aware that you know at lower levels you might get away with it, but once you start climbing up the tower, people are gonna be punishing that, right? Another super is honestly like probably the coolest super in the game, and one of the reasons I like this character. He has time stop super. It's insult super. You can do it wherever. It costs 50 meter. Lasts about five seconds. Um, when you ever have this purple aura around him, he has it active. And in order to activate it again, you just do the time stop super again. So on block, you're actually in a pretty good situation. When that happens and they just block it, you're about zero. And if they're like jumping, it'll actually push them back. So you're actually plus if they block it jumping. But what you want to actually have happen is you want them to get hit by it, right? And the cool thing is you can cancel this. You can basically do like a JS, cancel the time stop, and you get a full combo. You just do something basic like that. You get decent damage. There's some more optimal stuff. Generally, if they're on the ground, like let's say you get this, you can do a forward heavy slash and you're gonna go TK Bomber.
But yeah, you get something like that after, uh, that's, that's pretty close to optimal. The other conversion you'll need to know is that if they're in the air, let's say you land something like that, you can just do like that, TK Bomber, and then you can go into your uh, same grounded combo string again. Yeah, they're both very good options. You see you get very good damage for something you might not necessarily get damage off of, right? So I personally like doing, especially if you have free meter, if you have 100 meter, you're not gonna build any extra meter. If you're mid screen, just activate. It does have a little bit of startup time. So it's good after like, if they're full screen and they like, and they like get hit by that, you can just activate and then you can kind of like go in and then you can get your pressure. Um, but the common things that I do this are, yeah, 5P into that's really good. JS into time stop is really good. Um, the other cool thing that I do like to do is if you're rushing down, you can do JH into time stop. JH is a instant overhead, cancel that into time stop. And you get a basic combo like that, right? Which is pretty good for a uh, instant overhead, right? The cool thing about it is that's mainly burst safe because they can't burst while time is frozen. All right, so combos, um, you know, I, sh I showed you guys a few. I just showed you the time stop confirms. Um, there's some things from normal confirms, but the general combos that you need to know, 2K and 2D into this. 2K, 2D also works from 214S as well, but the situation you get is not as good, but it's still useful, right? You can also do 2 one that in the rents end, but I think the best situation is you want to confirm in that 214 HS. Not only does it do the most damage, but it also pushes them back as far as you can. So let's talk about his anti-air confirms. So you have two different options. Let's say you land a 2S on counter hit. The situation comes up a lot, and you guys saw through the tutorial. 2S on counter hit, you can always land a 5P, right? And the, the basic bread and butter is you do 5P into your charge special and then you do the pullback. You can also do, you can just do the explosion afterwards. And you see it does very similar damage. I personally like to do the pullback because you get a little better Oki. But sometimes like let's say against Potemkin, you kind of just want to keep them at full screen, right? So depending on the matchup and depending on the matchup, like the flow of the match, you might want to do the S follow up to the sickle flash because it keeps them full screen, which is good. You don't want someone like Potemkin right next to you. The other intricacy about this is that if you want to optimize your damage, you can go for a 5K, uh, 5P and then 6K. And this version is a lot harder. And you saw that they actually did a, that did a good amount more damage. So it's worth going, but there is an execution barrier here. And the thing is, you have to do a charge special after hitting forward on the control stick, right? And so you have to do this thing called charge partitioning, which basically means it's a fancy way of saying that right after you hit forward, you hit back. And you have to hit forward, you have to hit back so quickly that you do the 6K and then you hold back and then you're already holding back by the time that the 6K actually comes out. So look at the controller thing on the bottom left. You see how you instantly hold back. And then you have to wait until you have enough charge time in order to do the sickle flash. So it looks something like that. And so it makes it a little trickier, but you do get 20 more damage. Uh, approximately, right? It all depends on the hit confirm and that sort of thing. So definitely something you should learn to master. Um, but if you're just starting out, I recommend just keeping the 6k out of your compass for now and just learning the basics of the character, right? Um, and you may be wondering, hey, what do I do for Roman cancel? So in general, you, I don't recommend spending Roman cancel unless you are about to kill or you're in a situation where, yeah, basically a situation where you can afford to use the meter. So let's say you have a hundred meter. So generally after any Roman cancel, you can do the basic of the same bread and butter. So you can do something like that. You see, you don't get that much more damage. Um, you can get something like that too. Um, you can also use a 6k here as well. Generally, you don't want to be RCing like a uh, a 2k combo because again, it, it scales so much. So let's say you uh, RC your JH, right? Which is also another good use of RC. You can get this, which is again, very basic. You can also add the 6k to those confirms as well, but keep in mind the lower they are off the ground, the harder it will be to link that sickle flash afterwards. So you have to be a little careful. 
other than that that's basically all his combos there's some really cool uh axle bomber stuff you can do in the corner i don't recommend learning them right away go um there's plenty of combo guides out there definitely recommend looking that up but generally you don't have the opportunity to land sickle to land axle bomber loops in the corner but if you are curious they look something like this <laughs> it's pretty cool but it's really technical and you're not going to get an opportunity very much because there's no stun in this game to actually land that but it does big boy damage um and you can also you can do that bomber combos in the rc as well so let's say you get something like this so you can get something like that too in the corner which is pretty cool but yeah, but that's honestly, those are the confirms I would start out learning. There's obviously a many different variations and combos out there, but these are ones I recommend. And once you start getting more advanced and you start understanding the flow of this neutral, you have many matches under your belt, then I would start recommending going to the advanced combos. But yeah, so just a quick summary, right? A lot of 5Ps, a lot of 2HS if they're on the ground throwing out stuff. Um, you can throw out preemptive 6Ks as well. If they're up in the area, let's say it's against Faust or someone, you'll be doing a lot of jump Ds. I think jump Ds is one of his, probably one of his best things to do on the ground you do it approaching you can do it fade away and then you want to be able to you know get them to sit still be able to set up the rinse in in neutral and then go for the one of the follow-ups and once you do that um you know condition this is still neutral eventually you'll get the hit eventually you can start your offense and eventually you can you know you can go start for stuff like this you can do go for six hs pressure you can go for this on block and try not to <laughs> try not to get hit and when you get hit you can either bust out with defensive rc which is yellow rc when you're blocking you can bust out with super you can also try to fd your way out too you have to have a really good understanding of defensive mechanics and you know that's something will come with practice don't forget about your burst as well don't be afraid to go burst on the ground and get that meter then go into time stop super whenever you have 100 meter try to go into time stop preemptively just to uh you know control the neutral for a little bit but yeah most of your experience will come through playing matches so my recommendation is you know try to internalize some of this play some matches and keep learning as much as you can with axel so guys i hope you appreciate the guide if there's anything you want to see additionally let me know in the comments below i could do an advanced guide with them later if you guys are interested in that let me know as well um i think this covers the vast majority of player base so i'm a little hesitant to do advanced guide but it's something i can do if there is demand for that i will be posting additional guides on my channel even just for um general strive stuff that will help you out if you're actual play or if you're interested in learning other characters so you know consider subscribing if you found this tutorial useful or if you're interested in uh seeing some additional get to your strive or other fighting game content thanks and hope you guys all have a great day